Alright, welcome to another video. Uh, this today's video is going to be about combustion. Combustion comes about pretty frequently uh, in your exam. Uh, it's very simple. Like you need to know like two forms of combustion, and what, the, and more importantly, the the products of combustion uh, with hydrocarbons, especially. So uh, yeah. Right, so combustion is pretty much burning. So combustion equals burning. When burning hydrocarbons, there's complete and incomplete combustion. Complete combustion uh, gives a blue flame, uh, producing only carbon uh, dioxide and water. The reason for this is that usually when you see this is that the, the, the gas, when you turn the Bunsen burner, it should have a full circle in it. That means you're letting in the maximum amount of oxygen in. Because you're letting in all that oxygen, it's in, described as being in plentiful some amount of oxygen or a uh, constant amount of, of unlimited amount of oxygen essentially so because this doesn't there's enough oxygen to completely combust all of the hydrocarbon so you're gonna get all of the carbon atoms on that compound are gonna produce co2 and in the hydrogen atoms then form uh, water uh, that's the only form so you, you're gonna get carbon dioxide and water as the product and the flame should be blue uh, because of that then there's also incomplete combustion Incomplete combustion, you'll see when you do a bunsen burner, it should be like a half, the gap uh, should be half done. Uh, so it does only let in a certain amount of oxygen. It's not, it's, it's not in a plentiful amount of oxygen. Hence why uh, you'll see here, and I'll explain why you'll get this orange flame. Uh, because it's not in a constant amount of oxygen, uh, or a limited amount of oxygen, the, uh, the hydrocarbon that you have, uh, only some of the there's not enough oxygen for all of the carbon carbons in the hydrocarbon to get converted into carbon dioxide so you'll get carbon monoxide and a very small amount of co2 and um some of the carbon won't react with oxygen at all so it just gets soot so that carbon those carbon or that soot that we get uh it, got, it starts glowing red here so when you react or when you have your hydrocarbon it will start glowing kind of red because it's it's just it's just being heated you know it's just being there's no oxygen there to give it that, that blue color so it's just glowing when you get this orange smoky kind of color uh it's uh because of the glowing carbon atoms i don't know what i said here so it just gives an orange smoky flame due to small particles of carbon dioxide uh it should be carbon particles Carbon dioxide glowing red it should be carbon particles glowing red. Yeah, let me correct that. Yeah, so and then I'll just get it. Uh, uh, I'll just get rid of this. Set. Producing. Carbon, mon so the the products of this because you can't get full CO two, there's not enough oxygen. You get carbon monoxide. So, so you get carbon monoxide, carbon particles, which is just your soot, and water vapor. You get some water vapor, but not a, not a lot compared to complete combustion. And you'll get faint hindrances or small amounts or trace concentrations of carbon dioxide, and some of your hydrocarbon won't uh, combust at all. So you're more likely, uh, this is more likely to occur with long chain uh, hydrocarbons compared to this one. So short chain hydrocarbons are much more easier to break down. That's why they do complete combustion because there's less of those van der Waal forces because it's, because it's a smaller chain, uh, less energy is needed to uh, break all of the van der Waal forces to, uh, and less energy to break those, those covalent bonds, the carbon carbon covalent bonds. Overall, there's less bonds to break. Here, there's going to be is much more. The longer your chain is, the more van der Waal forces you have in total, and also there's more carbon carbon covalent bonds to break. So a lot of more, a lot more oxygen would be needed for uh, incomplete combustion for the for these longer chain hydrocarbons, and they don't get that much oxygen. So because of that reason, so uh, you have incomplete combustion. Uh, yeah, so. Alright, cool. So let's do an example here. So if I had uh, ethane, if I had ethane here, so ethane C2H6 uh, gas, 
and when you react something when you combust something it's always going to be of oxygen so it's always your uh with pure oxygen you assume pure oxygen so plus o2 gas and then you go here it's always going to be a it's not a reversible reaction once you burn something so c2h6 plus o2 so you probably got to understand that this is a small molecule and it's a very small and simple molecule because of that it's going to very easily be uh as long as you have sufficient oxygen the question will tell you whether or not you have sufficient oxygen some may not but uh, with a simple small molecule like this you probably would have sufficient enough oxygen in order to completely combust c2h6 so you have c2h6 plus o2 goes to make uh your products are always going to be co2 gas plus h2o as you've seen here i left a bit of a gap in order to allow me to balance the equation because you always got to balance the balance of the equation law of conservation of mass you always you can't uh, create or destroy atoms so uh yeah so just balance this equation quickly i always do it like this two carbons here so you should be doing this within one minute uh yeah two carbons six hydrogens two oxygens you want to have two carbons here so that's two oxygen four hydrogens need to be six here so five three h2 that's six hydrogens four five six seven seven here seven over two here that's seven two six seven there you go, and that's your balanced equation right there. C2 ethane plus 7 over 2 oxygen goes make 2 CO2 plus 3 H2O. And that will get you one mark. It will be a quick question at the start of your exam or anywhere in your exam. It will be a one mark question. Can you do it? You just need to know. If you have sufficient enough oxygen, you'll be, um, it will be uh, a complete combustion. So let's take this example here, which is decane. C10 H22 plus plus oxygen. So fully cool, it gets converted to. So this is a longer chain of uh, uh, hydrocarbon. So so it's more like, and it, they'll probably say tell you that there's it's not insufficient oxygen. So it's going to be an incomplete combustion. So you're going to get carbon monoxide and water. So it's right. CO is the most important part is plus H2O. And there'll be other things like, you know, cut, uh, soot, which would be in high demand, but you, these are like the main two that, they, that they're looking for. Uh, and then your tracing mass as well, but yeah. Now you just have to balance it. Put that to 11. That's 22. 22. So that's 32. No, no, 11. Sorry, 21. Why am I talking about 32? 21 here. Just put that 21 over 2. I believe that's balanced. 10 carbons, 22 here, 22 there. Twenty-one over two. So yeah, that's it, balanced, and then that should be it. Right, so the energy released from the combustion of hydrocarbons, particularly alkanes, 
uh, is sufficient for powering vehicles via the internal combustion engine. So essentially what I'm trying to say is, is that it's very useful. Like it's still very useful to say use it in, as you know as fuel, petrol for cars, diesel for also for cars or, or lorries or even powering uh, generators or engines. So it's still very this that's the main reason why obviously you know, we need combustion, we need to we need to combust these these compounds in order to get a release energy. So yeah, it's it's so it's sufficient enough. Uh, so energy, there's quite a lot of energy released from when these bonds are broken. It doesn't actually require a lot of energy to break uh, some of these bonds for the shorter chain uh, hydrocarbons like pentane. Uh, in your class, because you got quite a, a hot engine in order to do so, uh, but it releases much more energy than it, it does to actually break it. So yeah, that's why it makes it such a good um, a good fuel. Impurities can be see so yeah, some of the common impurities from internal combustion engine. So let us list them out here. So you have to actually understand that there's a, quite a few here. There's nitrous oxide, unburnt hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, uh, sulfuric acid, so sorry, sulfuric acid, sulfate, sorry, that can then turn into sulfuric acid. So yeah. If you don't know this already, you can write nitrous oxide as NOx because it can be NO2 or NO. So, because it can be one or two, you just write uh, NOx there. Unburned hydrocarbons, you don't want any long chain of hydrocarbons in your bloodstream. Uh, so, yeah, and then carbon monoxide. I'm going to start off with explaining carbon monoxide. Yeah, all right. So the reason why carbon monoxide is such a is is so bad is that you wouldn't have learned this yet, but you would have when you get to year thirteen, you learn something about the Killet effect. It's it's more to do with um, it's more to do with transition metals, which are which iron is a transition metal. But you don't need to learn about it uh, right now. But you need to understand that hemoglobin has a stronger attraction to carbon monoxide than it does to oxygen. Because of that, it means that obviously it's gonna get it's gonna get carbon monoxide, and it's not gonna dissociate from the hemoglobin. So when that happens, that means that. You're not going to get oxygen to your cells if you're not going to, and obviously if there's no oxygen going to the cells, cells can't respire uh, aerobically, and and you know the, those cells eventually are are, are going to die from a, a, from deprivation of oxygen, anoxia. So, and it's very hard to actually remove that once that that bond forms between hemoglobin and carbon monoxide. It's a very strong bond, so it's very hard to 
to treat carbon monoxide poisoning. So, yeah, so carbon monoxide, to put it simply, disturbs. I think you, all you need to say in your reaction is that it just disturbs uh, respiration pathway. Make that a bit larger. Right. Then you have uh, nitrous oxide. Uh, it reacts with the ozone at ground level. So Ozone irritates eyes and uh, it can cause damage to the lungs. So, you want that. And then, last, or well, not last actually, uh, you need to know about flu gases. So, Flue gases are, are flue gases are gases that come out of the chimneys from either your house or from uh, from factories, as well as uh, being produced as yes, yeah, so as being produced as industrial waste. Flue gases often contain uh, sulfur, di sulfur dioxide. So sulfur dioxide dissolves in water, or also known as dissolution forming a uh, sulfuric acid uh, after passing through the water cycle it precipitates as rain destroying trees and vegetation so yeah so I'm going to simplify this so flue gases from chimneys and industrial waste Main component uh, sulfur di or uh, sulfur dioxide which dissolves in water. I've already explained this, so I'm not gonna go into it but at the end of the at the end of this of of the water cycle, which you should know from GCSE, in this case it will precipitate and damage. That's I'm pretty sure it produces sulfuric acid, which is which can damage and uh, damage trees and vegetation, which we don't want. There's also, uh, there's also, as I said before, un unburnt uh, hydrocarbons. You don't want hydrocarbons in your uh, bloodstream. Uh, simply because it's, it's kind of the same reasoning as the carbon monoxide. Uh, they're very, first of all, they're, it's mostly to do with the fact that they're very large. Long chain uh, hydrocarbons very hard to break down they stay in your bloodstream they cause blockages in your bloodstream they cause blood clots as well um and if and it, it just it just prevents the movement of oxygenated and deoxygenated oxygen uh, blood so oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin from going to where it needs to get to so uh yeah you don't want those those there to do with uh sulfur dioxide 
It can be removed by reacting it with calcium oxide or calcium carbonate due to the fact that sulfur dioxide is acidic and calcium, calcium uh, oxide is, 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 well, is basic. So it's basically a neutralization reaction. So you're getting a salt and, and, uh, and, and, and water. So uh, yeah, I can just show you the, I can just show you the thing right here actually. So, another thing you need to know is that sulfur dioxide can be removed by reacting it with calcium oxide uh, and calcium carbonate. Uh, due to the fact that sulfur dioxide is acidic, calcium oxide is basic, uh, so you're getting a neutralization reaction. So, essentially, here. Oh, let me just move this up a bit. So you have the balanced equation for this reaction is CaO plus SO2 goes to make Ca CaSO3, and that's the reaction there. And catalytic converters uh, can remove unburned hydrocarbons and nitrous oxides from fuel. I forgot to mention that one there. So that's uh, why we have catalytic, catalytic converters, and you'll find these in the exhaust pipes or in the exhaust system of your car or lorry or whatever. So that's what they're there to remove those toxic gases uh, uh, that are emitted from your vehicle or from your engine. And then bringing it back to here. I also mentioned water vapor. Water vapor actually is pretty bad if it's in high concentrations. So high concentrations of uh, water vapor can be dangerous as it adds uh, water vapor is a greenhouse gas, so it adds to the greenhouse effect and global warming. Uh, it traps down the, uh, the heat rays that that are emitted down to earth. They get reflected when they try to escape and go back up, uh, up that atmosphere. They get re they get reflected back down to the earth's surface. So essentially, you're trapping the heat back down to the earth's surface. Uh, that that obviously that leads to the global warming effect. Also. If you only know anything about the, or well, you should know, if you've done GCC bio, uh, biology or kids with GCC chemistry, you should know that um, the water cycle, that humid air that goes up, eventually has to come down as uh, precipitation from as, as rain. If you have a really high amount of uh, high amount of, of water vapor, then that will eventually lead to torrential rain or monsoon rain, where you're getting long days of excessive rain that leads to flooding and obviously that leads to major agricultural problems but you don't need to get into that but that's that's a problem that's gonna be a problem on top of that you have also humidity if it's if the air is too humid that could affect the plants that are around if you've got an indigenous wildlife area um the amazon rainforest for example or, yeah i'll just use the amazon rainforest for example if it's too if there's too much humidity the, the transport if you know anything about the transpiration stream in biology uh, plants needs to get rid of water essentially and if, if the air is around it is too humid it can't do that obviously so uh, if, it's, if the air is too humid because of because of excessive amounts of water vapor that could affect the transpiration stream which also affects plant life so less plant life less oxygen for us so and less food for us so a couple these are a couple of things that you need to understand about uh the effect that combustion has on the environment uh some of these will come up some of these have gone way too deep into their meaning you'll you'll need to really know too much about them but that calcium that sulfur dioxide the one that's um and the calcium oxide you probably you need to know that uh carbon monoxide ozone those are part of the example this one here i'm not really too sure about about the water vapor but yeah that's it